Oh boy, uh, if you uh, read One Piece, how about that chapter 1044? Holy shit. Anyway, uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm still, I'm still coming down from that, but, um, uh, I am Parcel Jutsu, and I'm here to actually do a live reaction to My Hero Academia. Uh, yes, chapter 349, uh, titled Battle Flame. And yes, I, I was I, I was partially, not spoiled, but made, made aware that Dobby uh, plays a role in this chapter, so I'm sure. So it'd be cool to see, you know, check in on Todoroki and his, you know, the Battle of the Brothers uh, and, uh, wow. Ooh, wow. I mean, yeah, we have starting with a very dynamic, uh, comic book inspired, uh, cover page. You know, Horikoshi has done this kind of cover before. It's very cool. But this one features Bakugo and Miracle. Oh my lord. I mean, uh, yes, Miracle's doing a very, uh, very dynamic action, you know, kicking pose for this cover. And wowie. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, let's get into the chapter here. Oh yeah, we see she has like her battle uh, enhancements. Like her her arm looks like a cannon, and her her, her artificial leg is like uh, you know like like the cool bunny leg or whatever. So yeah, uh, but wow, that the, her costume uh, is very uh, form fitting. Um, anyway, okay, that's it. That, no more. No more. No, no. <laughs> Moving on. So when we last left off, Deku was leaving uh, Okuto Island to, you know, leave Toga to Uraka and Froppy so he can make a beeline straight to uh, to UA to back up Bakugo and the rest uh, against Shigaraki. And uh, here he is going full Superman, just like like whipping through the air over the sea. And so I was, yeah, I was wondering how uh, how exactly Deku was gonna fly there, uh, like at top speed, you know, because he could do it. I was thinking maybe he's combined. He would combine like float with Fa Jin or something like that. He would be able to like propel something. It looks like that's what he's doing. Uh, yeah, it looks so. Uh, yeah, he seems to be combining those two quirks as he looks very determined as he's just like rocketing through. Looks like I almost hit a seagull. <laughs> like seagulls, like, <laughs> they could just blast right through. Uh, okay, so he he explained. Yes, uh, I'm using both the seventh's float and the third's fajin. So yeah, you see, you see uh, the image of the two of them. So it's a very cool combination there. Very smart uh, use of his powers. Uh, he's, he's thinking uh, to himself. Air Force pushes me forward and helps me keep uh, balance, but I'm too slow. Out in these open waters, there's nothing for me to uh, grab a hold of with the fifth black whip. Foe, uh, hundred percent would do the trick, but faster. I gotta get there faster. And suddenly. The second user chimes in. The one user who we don't know who what his quirk is. Like, he's the one user, one for all, that we, whose quirk we don't know yet. Uh, the guy with the scar on his face. Okay, are we finally going to learn the final quirk that Deku has at his disposal? Uh, so he, he chimes in inside Deku's mind. He goes, don't lose your head. Uh, it's clouding your judgment. Those reinforcement parts can't withstand one for all at 100% power, right? Are you planning on getting hurt before reaching the battlefield? Deku says no. And uh, the second user goes, or did you attempt to use my meta ability? Uh oh. What is it? And Deku says, yeah. So it's very interesting that he says uh, meta ability rather than quirk, which makes sense because that you know that's from the era that he's from. They weren't the word quirks wasn't synonymous with you know people's power, people's abilities. They were called meta abilities. Uh, so that's a nice attention to detail. Uh, but uh, the second user continues. I thought I told you that was meant to be your last resort. As one for all grew in strength, so did all the all of our meta abilities within it. 
As a result, mine evolved into a particularly unique power. Okay. And we're like, we see like the, the door inside of Deku's like soul, I guess. I guess the door that's like uh, holding the second user's quirk. It's not something that can be wielded the usual way, as I once did. Uh, don't fall into des desperation. This is a this is a battle for the very future. Yes. Have faith in your friends. They're all out there for their own reasons. Knowing that should allow you uh, to focus your energy on your own battlefield. And so, uh, with those sage words, we cut back to Okuto Island. Uh, we still see we still see like the black tendrils from that gnome was sticking out. So I wonder I wonder what that is. I wonder what his quirk is because they've been like. Stick. I thought they're like shooting up, but it seems like they're like I don't know. Maybe they're like standing up or something. I don't know what his quirk is supposed to be. Uh, or Rocket goes. Uh, he's gone. And Froppy says, "Good. I don't think Midoriya could have ignored Toga for long." You see Toga with her rocket tendrils. And Froppy's thinking to herself, uh, "I can't stand the thought of a secret my friend holds dear." Being revealed like that. Toga says, I've had enough. Izuku, Ochako, Suyu, I love you all, but I'm done. I'm ready to be who I want to be. All I want is to live the way that uh, feels right to me. Right, Jin? Oh, no. And she reaches for her pouches. And she's, I bet she's, she's about to pull out the blood sample of twice, which is, which means it's about to get real hectic. She goes, I'm Himiko Toga, and I've got no use for heroes, so get ready to say bye-bye. <laughs> Rocket goes, no thanks. I'm also living uh, the way that's right for me. As Ochako Uraraka... And I am Pirate Style Jutsu. Oh, sorry. Uh, but with that, we cut away to Kamino, where we just see a massive eruption of flames. Uh, as uh, we see, it, yes, it's the Kanagawa Prefecture of Kamino Ward. Uh, and we just see the, the statue of All Might still standing, as it's just like engulfed by flames. Uh, Someone's saying, uh, there are already so few heroes left, and you're losing more by the minute. Let's see, we've got a Nomu. See, like, there's this huge, spiky Nomu, like, with, like, these long, skinny needles sticking out of his body. It has, like, a mace-looking, like, tail. And it's just, like, it's, like, towering over everybody. He said, let's see, we've got a Nomu and a raging sea of fire. Uh, this is really bringing back memories. That he's standing, Dobby standing right on the All Might statue, like putting his hand on it. Uh, even if it wasn't that long ago, seeing that battle in Hosu spurred me to take action. You know. Oh, we got Ida's here in Camino. He he's, he goes. Uh, he's he's like standing in front of a tornado of fire, as he says, "Shoto, the sheer heat. It's extraordinary." I can't get any closer, uh, lest it ruin my engines. I just see Dobby just like rising up as he shoots flames out of his feet. As he, he continues his uh, monologue. Uh, whoops, sorry. Just yapping away to myself. Once again, he won't pay me any attention. It really bums me out that I, all I get is his third son. And his three merry helpers. Is that really his answer to me? You see, he's just like, you see, uh, Shoto, uh, Burnin, and I think a couple other Endeavor sidekicks just standing under Dobby as he just, like, like rises above them with fire everywhere. So, yeah, we see two, two of Endeavor sidekicks, uh, Kido and Onima, and one of them is, like, the mummy-looking guy that we've seen throughout the series whenever we see Endeavor's, like, sidekicks. And uh, the other guy with the horns. I think that's the guy that I didn't recognize from a few chapters back. Where he, he has like the two horns. I was like, 
This guy looks familiar, but I can't tell exactly. But I think, yeah, this is him. He's one of Endeavor's sidekicks. Uh, he says, uh, you keep back, uh, Keto. Your body's got no way to withstand the heat. And so I guess Keto is the mummy guy. And uh, the horn guy is on, uh, Onima. And so Keto says, uh, I'm good. Uh, you know I can alter the trajectory of anything. Uh, so I've just got to make all the hot air swerve around me. That's a cool quirk. Uh, nothing new for me. Oh, we start to see, like, his actual face under all of his wrappings a little bit. Like, see, like, this part of his face. He, he goes, uh, keep a cool head and go about go about it logically. That's how I've done it uh, for a whole decade. Just like always. I'm here to follow our main man's orders because I want to. Oh boy, I think <laughs> seeing uh, a bit of a death flag over Keto, you know, that's just me personally. But uh, maybe not. Uh, but Vernon says uh, his family drama may uh, be a can of worms, but Endeavor shows up and gets the job done, even if he does stink like an old fart. And that includes today. And now he's handed off us three junior stinkers to you. So you've got our support, kid. So she's talking to Shota. And uh, Shota goes, oh, thanks for that, Brennan. She goes, uh, no no thanks needed. Save your energy. And Toya says, like, softly, Toya, Dobby, you've got it all wrong. I'm not here on anyone's orders. I'm standing here now because I made the decision to stop you. And uh, he's just like, Dobby's just like sizzling with fire as he, he just like like laughs. Stella job, being the perfect little pawn Dad always dreamed of. Shoto goes, uh, if I ignored you and kept trying to be a hero anyway, uh, that just might be true. Dobby says, uh, hey, fair enough. This war is all about the people involved. It's not the mind, the soldiers following orders who are the real movers and shakers. This is what happens when everyone's got feelings and urges that start firing off. And as he's continuing his speech, we see a glimpse of Toga and Spinner and Shigaraki. As he says, uh, some want to change the world they live in, the Toga, or destroy uh, the warped imbalances built over time that we all just came to accept. We see Spinner and Shigaraki. Behold the limitations of superpower society. That's me. That's all of us. We live in a society. Okay, damn it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I can't help but draw parallels between like Dobby and the Joker sometimes. He's, he, he's kind of like the Joker with fire powers to me sometimes. Uh, but uh, Shoto says, you survived back then. So why didn't you come home? You really want to know? Fine. Happy to share. Rotten or not, I'm still your big bro. Here's the story of how I became Dobby. Now this is a story all about how my life got... Oh, sorry. <laughs> then it gets really sketchy, y'all, on this last page of the chapter. You see Dobby's like face like... Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my God. His face is burning even more. Like, his lips are gone now. It's just like... Oh, my God, dude. Oh, you see, like... You see, like, the roots of his bottom teeth. Dude, you gotta stop, man. Don't you have pain receptors? He goes, uh... And the reason I'm still alive and kicking... To tell the tale. Even when I never stopped burning hotter than you. His masterpiece. And that's the end of the chapter. So yeah, we got... Some burning hot feelings on the battlefield. Uh, between these two brothers and everyone else involved. And uh... It's just gonna get hotter, I think. 
But yeah, not too much uh, action in this chapter, but a lot of setup for for a really intense battle. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's my uh, live reaction to chapter three forty nine. So yeah, like the video, comment, subscribe. Pirates of Jutsu. Signing out. <sighs>